Mike, how are you doing today? Good. But um, can you just walk us through kind of the thinking and, and deciding to to rest uh, certain guys and, and sit others tonight? Well, let's, uh, let's give a big shout out to the Sac Republic. Big game this weekend. Everybody in Sacramento, I hope you go attend. My guy, Mike Mark Briggs, he's a good friend of mine. He's your head coach. Um, they're going to do some damage, just play off run. So uh, everybody that can make it, let's go cheer them on loudly and show Sacramento Republic some love this weekend. Let's go. They're in the playoffs. Uh, had to get that out there. Are you um, going? I'm going to try to go. Okay. We have, you know, obviously we have, we have practice and then we have a fan, fan fest. So long, long day for me. I've been to a couple of them this year and they're a lot of fun. And on uh, guys, sitting guys out tonight, I know you were thinking that you might go ahead and play everybody tonight for a while at least, but the, you, you've changed your mind. Yeah, um, you know, guys got played extended minutes last night. The game got competitive. And so it was, it was a lot of fun for our guys to be in that environment, especially against that team. And, um, and so because they played longer than I expected last night, game was a little bit more physical than I, than I had expected to, which was great. Um, you know, I decided to not risk anything, S sit a couple of guys, and then we have a couple of guys uh, that, uh, that can't go and, you know, Trey tweaked his calf or something like that, and Keegan's sick. Uh, obviously, Duarte's out. Mike, when you look, nice to see you. Uh, when you look back at last year, yeah. what are you most proud of that, that, that you guys did? Uh, I mean, you know, one thing that, that I have to give our guys credit, I think the being known as having the number one offense in the, in the history of the game, um, that's no small feat, you know, and, and uh, all of our guys, Contributed it obviously in some way, shape, or form, you know, to have that. And, you know, a lot of, you know, it's, it's even that much more special when you look at a team because a lot of guys wouldn't place any of the guys that were on our team last year in the top 50 all time greatest or, you know, the all time greatest scores or anything like that. And so a bunch of guys that came together that, you know, got quote unquote second chances, you know. Um, they found a way to connect, uh, not just off the floor, but on the floor. And uh, that connectivity was something that uh, propelled us to having the number one offense. You know, so I was, I was, I was uh, pleased with, with the guys being able to do that just because of the historic accomplishment or something like that. If I flip it around to the other side, when you look at defensive improvement, no. what are systematically are there adjustments you're making, and then what are the things that are going to have to happen for you to vault up the rankings defensively? Yeah, there, there are some things that we're adjusting systematically, and uh, you know we weren't great to pick and roll game, and so there are some things that we changed um, with the way we we do uh, defend the pick and roll, uh, but also we're putting more emphasis on you know getting over the top of that ball screen with the ball. Um, so having a sense of physicality without fouling. Um, also, uh, trying to get our hands more active at the at the point of the screen, and, and as the ball handler goes, the pass in motion. You know, so those are probably the two biggest uh, things we're doing with that, and, and the biggest area that we need to show improvement in. And I think just the level of the physicality and, and intensity can. Uh, start off at a higher point than what it did last year so that we're not going into the playoffs trying to play catch up with our offense because we dramatically increased the intensity and physicality of our defense. Yep. Coach Brown, we, tonight uh, look like you get a chance to get a look at longer look at some of the, uh, yeah. the other players and stuff. How are you going to approach that with them? No, it's, it's a great point. Uh, that's part of what I'm going into is, you know, we've, we've had some guys uh, step up and, and play some productive basketball for us. And, 
And that is chewed up. I'm not the only one. You guys can see it too. As we all know, Kobe's done a great job out there. And, you know, we've got a lot of guys that we can play, but it's going to be hard to keep them off the floor. And the neat part about that is it's competition, it's real competition. And, and if you're not getting it done, then, you know, obviously there's somebody else that could come take your spot. And, you know, it's not a, not a threat at all. It's just, that's what my job is. My job is to try to put the best five out on the floor based on that situation whenever I can. And if, you know, uh, Kobe keeps doing what he's doing, it's going to be hard to keep him on that bench, you know. So to see him tonight in extended minutes, uh, whether it's at the two guard spot or the backup point spot, is something that I know I'm looking forward to seeing. And just for a follow up. Yeah. You gotta like to be in that type of position when you see that type of competition level, the way it is. Because we didn't, me personally, I didn't think Kobe would come, you know, come, um, you know, come along this quickly and stuff. But it, it got to be a good feeling when you have to have put yourself in a situation where you know you have to make these certain type of decisions with these guys. I'm with your personal feelings. I didn't think that that neither. So our personal feelings are the same. So we're connected personally. <laughs> <laughs> Kindred spirits, huh? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, no, you're right. I mean, you know, uh, when you when I watch Kobe, you know, on film when he was in college, he's a nice player, and you see, okay, hey, maybe at this, maybe at that. And when he first got here, okay, maybe at this, maybe at that. And a month or two in, okay, maybe. You know, and now it's like, whoa, <laughs> you know. He's got a chance, and, and you just like his progression. And I think the, the biggest thing that he had to figure out is how hard he had to play and how locked in he had to be throughout the course of 48 minutes. You know, it's still a little bit of adjustment for him, but he and I talked about that, and he even said that, uh, you know, his conditioning is something that he's got to continue to work on because to play that hard, uh, is not easy. Uh, it was funny last night, but I had a, I had a great laugh last night. Um, I didn't know what was going on. It was a dead ball situation. I think Keegan fouled somebody on purpose, and Keegan came over to me. He goes, Coach, you got to get Kobe out. <laughs> I was like, What? He was like, Can I get Kobe out? He's about to throw up. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, really? I was like, What? <laughs> and so Kobe comes like, speed walking by me. <laughs> it's the funniest thing because when I turned and look at him, <laughs> he, he was he was like this. He was like, uh, if it's not, come on, man. He was like. <laughs> and I, and I was like, Kobe. And he just turned to me, he goes. <laughs> I was like, Kobe, what's wrong? He's like. <laughs> he didn't say anything. So then he takes off to the bench. And so I follow him. I want to make sure he's okay. And he doesn't stop at the bench. He continues to go back in the back. And I don't know, you know, where he went in the tunnel. I don't know what happened after that. But apparently it, he, had, he had thrown up uh, and just yeah. kept it in his mouth. <laughs> his mom's going to kill me. I'm sorry. Uh, but, yeah, but, I mean, you know, and, and, you know, I mean, he's trying to play as hard as he can. And, and you know, it's, it's new for him. And, you know, to, to have a guy, I, I didn't even know that this was going on, to have a guy continuing to just try to bust his behind out there and do his right, and that was, that was like, uh, man, that was like one of those cute moments, you know. <laughs> I, it, it just tickled my heart. Uh, Coach, congrats uh, on last year's playoffs. And uh, you got the core five back. Uh, and talk about off-season acquisitions, you know, some, not a lot but some of the players that maybe have jumped out, you mentioned Colby. So now you go with Sasha and others. Who else has jumped out uh, that will be the supporting cast that you that you like? Yeah, you know, what I've, what I've, what I've seen to experience is, you know, in this league, if you want to have a chance to be great, you, you, know, you can throw together five, six all-stars like that if you get lucky with the cap space and guys coming to you and taking less and have one of those types of teams. But uh, Usually, if you want to have a, a great team that's sustainable, um, uh, you, you got to have a core. And so for us, you know, we felt we had a good season last year. Everybody was young and new, and 
So we wanted to give these guys a chance to see if they can grow together and see if we can find that core. And that was one of the biggest reasons that we brought everybody back. We genuinely think these guys can get it done. I didn't want to give them a chance. And and so, I, you know, you got to give Monty and, and, and Wes credit. They went and added uh, some pieces that uh, could possibly help us here or help us there. And so, <clears throat> so you're excited about it. You know, you talk about a guy, Chris Dorte, who is like, in my opinion, like the rest of our guys, you know, just somebody that was kind of cast aside and had a, had a little bit of a role in, in Indiana. And they brought other players in and, and now he's out of it. And, um, and so our guys were able to pick him up and, you know, as camp is going on, he's kind of raised some eyebrows too as a, as a two-way player. You know, uh, I, I did not think it's still early, so I don't, you know, I'm not sure of this, but uh, what he's shown defensively for me has been pretty impressive so far, uh, and it's gotten better uh, every time he's gotten on the floor, and then offensively he's gotten better uh, too with it. So I, I'm excited to see him back on the floor once he gets healthy. And you know, we had, I talked about Colby. Uh, you know, Sasha's a guy that uh, he hadn't shot it well yet in the preseason, but I tell you what, he's done a lot of little things. You know, he's physical. He's rebounding for us. Um, he's defending like I like I asked him to. You know, uh, um, he's using his intelligence and his strength and his size to catch drives and stuff like that. And uh, and then you know you got a guy like Javale, who uh, obviously everybody knows Javale. He's been around a long time, but just that that length and that size has been uh, has been big for us in, in the short amount of time that he's been with us. Last one, then Jason. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, my two things. One, um, with Chris, is there any indication yet whether he'll be ready for the regular season? And then um, secondly, would you mind telling us who you're going to start tonight with everybody, all these other guys out? Uh, yeah, I, I, Chris is you know, obviously that MRI or whatever he got, had got done and came back clean. And, and uh, <clears throat> he's progressing really well. Um, I mean, I can't. You know, I don't, I don't know. I haven't asked our guys, hey, will he be ready? And so I don't want to say yes or say no. But <coughs> he's definitely progressing in the right direction. And, and all his scans and all that came back clean. So hopefully he will be. Um, and then uh, we're going to start uh, uh, Davion, uh, well, it's Kevin, HB, uh, Sasha, and uh, Javel. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thanks, Coach.